on that example. So now I'm going to create an example where I do a dynamic grouping. I'm going to start everything from scratch. So what's a dynamic grouping, right? Let's make one chart and let's decide to create a vertical axis on some value, but let's allow the user, the end user, to tailor the, that final value to whatever they would like to utilize, right? So there, there are a couple tricks. There's a, there's a couple reasons I'm showing this to you. So one, I want to avoid manually typing anything. And so I'm going to try to copy and paste as often as I can to reduce the opportunity for errors. The other thing I'm going to showcase is our uh, static selection wizard. It's a little hidden as to where you find it uh, um, your first time. And then once you get used to it, um, you'll be comfortable creating some static, edit, um, static selectors uh, when you want to create them as well. And also, a new feature in the spring release was the column map. And if you create a dynamic binding for the groups or measures, you need to um, tailor the, the uh, column map. Uh, you need to make a change there. And I want to make sure you know that change that you need to make for the column map. So we're going to make our dynamic grouping. I'm going to start with my ops data. I'm going to look at the sum amount. I'm going to make a very simple grouping, a couple simple groupings. I'm going to allow people to group on the account industry. And, and, and so here's the first trick. I'm going to go into SQL mode only to see the string that represents the account industry, right? So I just want to grab this account ID industry so that I don't have any typing errors. And I'm going to go ahead and paste this in my text editor account industry. I'm going to go back and so that I don't switch this to a SQL lens, I'm going to leave it as a normal lens. I use, I like to use the back history button, the undo button. I like to do that because even if I made a SQL change, it reverts it back to a standard lens. So account industry is one. And the other one, I'd like to allow the users to specify the account type. So again, we go into SQL mode, um, not to do anything um, really intense. Again, just grab the string account type. So now I have the critical values that, that I'm going to enable as dynamic values. You can certainly get much more creative, um, but I wanted to use as simple an example as possible just to, to demonstrate the concepts here. So I'm going to go ahead and clip to my designer. I highly encourage you to label your steps effectively so they make sense and you know what they're doing. Um, I wanted to go with the default values to make things easier to demonstrate. So here I have a step that's grouping by the type the type is on the vertical axis, customer or partner, right? And the user, as I mentioned, can't do anything dynamic with this. They're always going to look at type. And in our example, we want to allow them to see the industry. We want to see if they group by industry, group by type. So here we are looking at the type. I said there was one kind of tactical element to create the static selector. We go ahead and hit create step. Here we find a static selector at the bottom here, create static step. And now we are in the static selector wizard, right? Um, so I'm not going to put anything for the display label on, the, or actually, I, I'll, I'll go ahead and put amount. Uh, I'll put select type. Might change my example a little bit. So for the display, we said we were going to let users pick the industry or the type. So industry and the value is what's most important, right? This is what I did not want to retype. I, I've always copied and pasted this, this value. So now if a user picks in industry, the system is going to use this API value. Um, and the next one is for type. So I can say whatever I want here in the label account type, and I will add that. I hit create, and you can see that it's, uh, if you're familiar, we bucket by data sets. Here we have our static selector. It displays it as, as a chart um, because it will default as the toggle widget. So if we just drag our static selector on here, we get a toggle widget as a reference. If you, if you want to get a list selector, you can drag a list selector on, and you can drag your static selector on top of the list selector. You, you also have that option available. Um, but because I have these 
just these two options, um, the toggle widget works well for me. Now, I want to, the user to always pick something for grouping. I don't want to, you can do some coding if you want to do a default. I want to make this coding as easy as possible. So on the step, I'm going to specify that single selection is required. So it will, it will pick one as a default. Um, you can change the initial selections if you want. I'm, I'm okay with industry being the default, right? So now what's important is the step ID. And here we get into bindings. Um, I'm not gonna talk too much about the binding syntax, but I'll, I'll talk a little bit about it. So here we have, um, if you have not used bindings yet, I like to think that they're evaluated inside out and that this is the formula that gets applied. So what happens here in what I have highlighted, select type one is the reference to the static selector and we're telling the binding that we want the user selection to activate it. The static selector has a display key and a value key. And the value key is the one that is account ID industry or account ID type. So we're telling this function that we want to use the key in value. And I'm going to insert this into JSON, so I have to escape the double quotes. Now, the, um, the column is the operation to tell which of the selections do we want to utilize. Um, this is actually more applicable as a cell selection, but we're using columns so you can see the syntax. And as object is a serialization function. If you're not used to that term, just know that when we are using this in the JSON, we want to replace it in this grouping type. And you can see it is an array, which is an object. So we have to always insert the binding as a string, but we want to get an array back. So we're gonna, we're gonna serialize it as an object. So here we have our bindings. I like to put spaces after the braces. You, you can do whatever you want. I've added the binding into the group section of my step. And I hit done, and we're going to see that it breaks, right? It's, it's going to break. It broke because the column map needs to be updated. And that's why I wanted to walk through this example. Again, if you have a dynamic grouping or a dynamic measure, the column map will need to be updated. How do we do that? Because we only need to update the column map for our steps and our corresponding widgets. Because I started from scratch, I can simply look for the column map and delete them all. But for yours, please only update the column map for the applicable steps and widgets because you may be using um, more enhanced chart features on some of your items and you will need that column map to still be there. So all we have to do is set the column map to null. I hit done. And now, when I preview, the user is able to now select dynamically what to group on, the industry or the account type. So the last 